అందరికి నమస్కారం అండి దీక్ష యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ ఏటీఎల్ ఆన్లైన్ సెషన్ కి స్వాగతం సుస్వాగతం డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ స్కూల్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఎస్సిఆర్టి యూనిసెఫ్ అండ్ విజ్ఞాన్ ఆశ్రమ్ అనుసంధానంతో మనం ఈ లైవ్ సెషన్స్ ఎవ్రీ ట్యూస్డే అండ్ ఫ్రైడే బీఆర్ కండక్టింగ్ ఆన్లైన్ యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ చేస్తున్నాము టుడే సెషన్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ యూజింగ్ కార్పెంటరీ అండ్ బిల్డింగ్ కటాపడి ఈరోజు కిషోర్ సార్ మనకి రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్గా ఉన్నారు విజ్ఞాన్ ఆశ్రమం నుంచి నవ్ హీ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు స్టార్ట్ ద సెషన్ ఆన్ కటాపల్ బిల్డింగ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఇస్మాయిల్ సార్ ఓవర్ టు కిషోర్ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ బాగా actually ma'am uh, i am going to uh, mechanism basically to it has been used in use since you know quite uh, you know too many years ago it was there in the use it was uh, used in the wars uh, as a as a mechanism to convert the potential energy into kinetic energy without uh, you know spending much time i'll start sharing my screen so the catapult using carpentry so in today's session the main focus is though we are going to learn about catapults primarily we are <clears throat> going to focus on how to use carpentry tools how to cut wood how to polish and how to paint the wood and to build our mechanism so let me start sharing my hello students in uh, today's atl online session we will learn uh, how to build a catapult uh, we'll see what catapult is its working principle but primarily we are going to focus on the learning carpentry so uh, let's see what catapults are we'll learn about their physics how they work their working principle basically they used to propel uh, the cannon balls or stones or arrows in the uh, wars in earlier days some of you might have seen this movie right or many of you might have seen this bahubali movie they are using this mechanism they are pulling down this holding it with rope now these people are climbing on the the tree now in the yeah so apart from the movie let's get back to our session so these catapults are basically ballistic devices used to launch a projectile to a great distance you know without use of any other uh, gunpowder or propellants so they basically release the stone potential energy to propel the payload like as i said cannon balls or arrows or people in this case so they release that rope and these people are thrown very easily at longer distance so they use springs or bows uh, let's see what are different types of catapults were there uh, in the world so far so medieval uh, time frame in the uh, european countries they used to have different types of catapults so this one basically shows an arrow throwing catapult they they were holding this and uh, by the by the uh, tension of the, the rope they will release yes sir yeah you are audible yes yes yeah i can hear you okay we put the courtesy uh, courtesy uh, in the video no okay. okay 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 this is the arrow now the second one that we are going to see in this picture is basically a stone throwing ballista you will see here in this uh, uh, picture so there is a stone that is basically held by the uh, by the rope 
and they 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 are going to release that uh, kind of a bow and it will be thrown so this is how that mechanism uh, will be uh, basically used to uh, launch that or project that uh, arrow now these people have tightened that uh, rope or the mechanism and they will release seeing that uh, the arrow is released like that so another uh, one is torsion powered onager so you can see that there is a rope uh, at the bottom of uh, this mechanism so they will tighten that uh, rope and there is a sling at the end of that uh, the the uh, rod there is a spring uh, sorry the sling holding that stone to be thrown it's called as a uh, onager another type is mostly it was used as a uh, catapult was a trebuchet now let's see how it basically works it works uh, on the principle of leverage and fulcrum so you might have seen uh, or might have heard uh, learned in your physics how the lever uh, mechanism works so let's see how it works basically so these are basically trebuchet used mostly in the uh, european uh, countries they were uh, basically in the walls uh, the behind the walls of castles and uh, palaces to throw or project the rocks cannon balls let's see how they uh, work so it works on the principle of a lever so it will have a lever then uh, there is a sling holding the uh, rock and it will work on the principle of leverage so there is a fulcrum along with that the lever is turned and now the stone is thrown through that sling so the stone will be thrown like this using that mechanism and it will be hit onto the uh, walls of the castle It's the rocks so how basically uh, it used to turn uh, so how people will basically they will turn the lever uh, using this fulcrum mechanism and that stone will be thrown like that so without people how basically the trebuchet also used to rotate so it worked on the counterweight mechanism so there were also counterweight trebuchet so you can see that the arrow so it is a counterweight so basically, basically it will uh, when there is no weight the sling will be on the floor position like that and it will be held by the pin now they will add more weight uh, to that counterweight section they will release the pin so adding more the other side what will happen the lever will be rotated along the fulcrum and the stone will be projected like this so uh, interesting is it right so how does a mass of object affect so heavier the object what will you think the big rock the heavy rock and the small rock which one will go further let's see Oh, the small rock will go further because of the inertia of the object. The big rock will have more inertia. Now, this is mangolin. So, we are going to build a catapult using this principle of mangolin. So, let's see more about this uh, catapult. So, it will have bucket, payload, arm, and cantilever spring. We are also going to uh, create a frame for this. So, we'll build this catapult today. Let's see basically what you know modern day catapults are. They are used in the aircrafts. So, yes. the warship car warship carriers. How catapults are used to basically lift the aircrafts on the ships. So, as you can see in this picture, uh, there are different types of uh, warships that are, uh, you know, many countries used across the globe. So, they are basically used to uh, land the fighter air jets uh, of their uh, air force. And they are also used when uh, most of the countries do not have their air bases, the dedicated air bases across, you know, uh, their air force or navy operations. As you can see that, this airship carrier is where these fighter jets are launched. There are different lengths, so ranging from 300 to 337 meters as compared to 2000 uh, meters for the regular uh, airports. Now let's see how basically these aircraft catapults work, which carry approximately 90,000 metric ton of load. And <clears throat> that too, they take off the flights within the distance of 300 meters 
in a in a few seconds so basically the aircraft ship has two uh, uh, catapults one at the bow that the front side and the two on the port side on the top you can see that there are two catapults so the two uh, air uh, two uh, airways so now uh, the catapults on the port side are at angle so that the pilot can land the uh, aircraft without any uh, difficulty so this is how the aircraft uh, catapult works so there is a chamber where the high pressure steam is stored in the accumulator so the steam is generated by the nuclear reactor and when the nuclear reactor will generate the steam it will be stored and it will pass to the flow control wall until the accumulator is filled so you can see that uh, in that control pod where the operator basically who will release the steam who will release the catapult will basically uh, will look at the pilot and when it is ready it will release that uh, air pressure it is approximately 3.2 megapascal so at such a high uh, pressure it is held so when the aircraft comes it will be uh, held into that catapult so lifter at the back of the uh, aircraft so there are two uh, fulcrums basically which are held by at the shuttle and uh, then the shuttle is basically uh, attached to the piston that orange piston that you can see in the picture so this shuttle is connected to the piston so this piston is basically moving forward and backward using the steam pressure as you can see on this picture so there are two cylinders and the two pistons so uh, in the bottom picture we can see only one but there are two pistons so this shuttle that you can see on the top is passed through the track and it will be uh, held it will be uh, holding the aircraft so as uh, and there is there is a mechanism called as grab it will hold it will hold the uh, mechanism for aircraft and there is one hydraulic cylinder at the bottom of this mechanism so what it will basically do is it will the tensioner will push the grab and it will move the piston forward and it will basically connect the grab will be attached to the uh, mechanism so the red bar that you can see is basically uh, helping the carrier not to move behind so there is a launch wall so when the aircraft is to be launched the catapult is to be launched this wall will be opened the steam will be pushing the uh, cylinder forward so at 20 metric ton so the aircraft will go to 265 kilometers per hour within 2 seconds and the aircraft will move out of that and it will create 5g of speed so into such kind of ride so 4g speed that is four times or five times gravitational speed so 750 kilo newton of load will be applied at a such a high pressure and the aircraft will come at then it will be released and the flight will take off now this uh, grab will be coming at the end so as the flight is released the steam is again uh, be released the grab will come at the end of the mechanism and it will take the piston back to its original position so this is how basically and the next carrier the next aircraft will come and be ready so let's build our own catapult using carpentry skills now these are the tools required drill drill bits uh, wooden material wooden planks and boards a hacksaw hot glue gun we will also need three pencils measuring tape marker we will need bench wise c clamp and definitely safety equipments we will also need uh, the sandpaper brush and wood polish we are going to use wood polish to uh, polish the wood the first uh, tool that we will need is hacksaw so hacksaw is basically uh, you can connect the blade using two pins there is one screw at the end the hacksaw blades are always uh, to be aligned forward so that it will help in cutting if you align the blades the tooth uh, backward it will not cut the wood the more number of uh, tooth per inch it will be used for thinner material so you also will get that specification on the hacksaw blade that how many number of teeth are there uh, on the blade more number of teeth it will be used for thinner material and that's how it will basically work now this is a mini hacksaw you can see that the gap between the blade and the top of top uh, frame is more so they, they are used to cut smaller and intricate uh, jobs unlike uh, the big uh, hacksaw so these hacks, these blades are also removable and replaceable as they are worn out so make sure that uh, now the next 
tool is the drill, the corded power drill that we are going to use. Uh, you, all of you have the uh, drill machine in your labs. Now let's see basically how to use the drill bit, uh, the drill machine and the drill bit. So this is a Bosch uh, drill bit, uh, drill machine set that you all have in your labs. Hammer is used to fit screws. The wrench is basically used to provide the grip to tighten the nuts and bolts. Plier is used basically to lock and adjust the screws and nuts again. So this is basically a level to adjust. Uh, it will uh, basically detect the surface level by adjusting the fluid drop. These drill bits are used for metal surfaces, the black ones. This middle one is concrete and these drill bits with the sharp end at the tip they are used for wooden surfaces. We are going to use the, these drill bits for our carpentry operation. Now let's see how to use the drill machine. It has two modes, wooden at this end and wall at the another end. So it works on three directions, clockwise that is forward in the lock condition and anti-clockwise for the reverse direction of the drill machine. Now let's see how to tighten the drill bit. Select the desired drill bit size, tighten it by hand initially and then using this key tighten the drill bit. Now another uh, tool that we will need is the bench wise. So it is very much important that you use the vice for carpentry operations. Do not hold the job in the hand and then use the drill. So they are basically used to hold the job uh, and these type of vices are re removable. This is a different bench vice. Uh, it can also, you know, align uh, the job at a different angle. So this is a little different bench vice, but primarily used for holding the job. These are C clamps. They are uh, again used to hold the jobs uh, on the uh, table or any other surfaces. So you will need to clamp the job appropriately. This is ball pin hammer that we are going to need to hammer the nails and uh, the round, a, round uh, the spherical uh, surface is going to basically use. Uh, this is a claw hammer. Uh, one end is to uh, hammer the nails and another side is to remove the nails. So if unnecessarily and this is a file set. So we are going to use the file set. You all have different files. Uh, in your lab. So we are going to use the files to smoothen the uh, wood surfaces. Next thing that we are going to need is zip tie to tighten the some of the parts. Now let's start with my marking the plates. So base plate, this is a uh, catapult that we are going to use. This is the dimension. So 20 millimeters from either of the sides and 50 millimeters. So total is the 90 millimeter. You can see in the figure. Let's mark 40 millimeters from one edge and now let's draw the lines as per the marking. You can pause and see that, uh, you know, base plate drawing. Now let's, this is at a 200 uh, millimeter from the edge. We'll, we have drawn the, so base is basically 200 millimeter in length in total. So now this is side plate. So we are using 20 millimeter thick wood, plywood. So 40 millimeter, uh, millimeters in length and 150 millimeters in, sorry, 40 millimeters in width and 150 uh, millimeters in, 155 millimeters in length. So mark 155 millimeters. And there is, there are two side plates. So another slide plate, 150. Five millimeters. So two side plates we have marked. So 40 millimeter in width and 155 millimeters in length and the base plate. So 90 millimeters wide and 200 millimeters in length. So this is launcher plate, eight millimeter thick, 40 millimeter wide and now mark at 40 millimeter uh, wide. 
draw a line basically we are going to cut that 240 millimeter width now we are going to mark it 305 millimeters as a total length that we need mark 300 millimeters first then another 5 millimeters so the total length of this launcher plate is 305 millimeters so we'll mark that now all the plates are ready after marking now it's time to basically start cutting so first start cutting the base plate so use the appropriate clamps saws and safety equipments now we have we are going to use the you know uh, adjustable bench wise we are going to use two of them because some of the wooden boards are longer in length like this base plate so it is better to clamp this base plate using two bench wise so it gets a proper support like this so tighten the job uh, properly use hand gloves keep the job the base plate up upright and start using the hacksaw you can use this type of hacksaw as well or the other type of hacksaw with the frame that i earlier shared so start cutting across one length we are not going to show the entire cutting process here this side is basically cut now uh, cut the another uh, edges that we have marked the 20 millimeter deep now remove the job and basically uh, attach it vertically tighten the clamps again and cut along these edges so they are 40 millimeter in depth now the other side of that same thing 40 millimeters now let's cut the entire along that entire line right from top to until 200 mm and remaining we can cut this at the edge and thereby we are ready with the base plate now let's cut the side plates so use proper clamps again and saws and safety equipments clamp using uh, clamp the side plates using the c clamp cut along the mark edges use this type of saw or hacksaw the uh, with frame cutting it at 150 millimeters one plate is ready now cut the second plate make sure that your cutting edge is very close to the clamp so that you don't get too much of overhang it is easy and safe that way now cut along that edge as well and we are ready with uh, at for we are ready with cutting at the length now to cut it exactly at 40 millimeter width repeat the same procedure for second plate and uh, we are ready with a base plate and two side side plates like this now cut the launch plate again use proper tools clamps and saws and safety equipments now the launch plate again uh, clamp the cutting edge very close to the uh, you know the the table now cutting along the vertical length turn the job clamp it vertically into the uh, vise and since it has more overhang cut it easily and slowly check all the parts together when they are cut whether they are fitting appropriately they have enough gap between uh, the two plates this is how it will look like you know when all the parts are cut now we are going to use pencils as a fulcrum mechanism so they are 7.5 millimeters in diameter so we are going to use a drill machine to cut uh, to make drills of 7.5 millimeters in the side plate so there are two holes along the side plate so we are going to clamp two sides side plates together mark at 25 millimeters from the top edge then draw a line parallel to the edge and mark the midpoint of that length or that edge so which is 20 millimeters so mark the middle point same thing draw another line at 10 millimeters uh, 10 centimeters on the top and draw its center point so now we are ready with uh, making drills so use the wood drill bit and make the through drill through the all that uh, two base plates or uh, two side plates now turn the turn the plates other way and drill the second hole make the second hole make sure that you are using gloves and uh, goggles 
we are ready with the side plates base plates launch plate and three pencils so now it's time to use sandpaper to smoothen the edges and surfaces it is very important before we color or paint the uh, wood you will need sandpaper and uh, we are also going to use polish so use gloves because you know uh, uh, while also sanding the job or using the sandpaper it is going to remove the smaller uh, wood particles and uh, you might not want to get injured because of the small particles now polish or you know smoothen the jobs along all the edges using sandpaper there are different types of sandpapers use the medium medium uh, grade sandpaper and uh, just move the sandpaper very uh, with medium pressure do not apply too much of pressure and do not also use too light a pressure move the sandpaper along the surface as well because we are going to paint all the edges surface as well now polishing the uh, rather using the sandpaper on the launch plate remove all the burrs all the sharp edges now polishing the main surface of the launch plate as well now we will use the files to smooth edges and surfaces we have used the sandpaper now it's time to use files so you know all these files that you are available uh, there are available in the labs now clamp the job for filing it is very, very much important that you clamp the job use the file as shown in the in the video you know put your left hand on the top of the file uh, apply very medium pressure and so that you can you, you are going to smoothen the sharp edges of the wood we don't want sharp edges so that it becomes easy to handle so we will smoothen all the edges of all the plates do not apply too much of pressure otherwise since we are using plywood it is easy to file and cut now let's use ball pen hammer and nails for joining the base plate to the or rather side plates to the base plate so clamp the base plate on the vice like this we are ready with a base plate and now take one uh, side plate so make sure that the top hole is aligned on the top and then use the nail use the gloves and you know carefully nail the plate like this do not hit too hard so that the plywood will break you know the plywood may get, get cracked if you hit the hammer too hard now second nail again take care while uh, applying the hammer on the nails so this is how we are going to use uh, the hammer and the nails now before we tighten uh, the second side plate with nails just insert one pencil through those two holes so that the top the other side plate now which is on the top is held exactly uh, making sure that there is an alignment between the holes because we are going to insert those pencils for our catapult so these holes need these holes need to be aligned so after aligning using the pencil only you try to you, know, you basically uh, use nails and hammer now let's use hot glue gun for double pins we are also going to keep the blue pencil uh, sorry the, this green pencil while nailing now apply the hot glue all around the the top dowel pin so we are going to use pencils as dowel pins since we are not going to you know buy any other round wooden uh, parts so apply a hot glue gun all around now at 10 mm 10 cm length on the launch plate apply the hot glue and put another dowel pin put another pencil as a dowel pin apply hot glue gun all across again length we are also going to use zip tie to basically tighten this all these pencils on the launch plate so apply hot glue on another side of the launch plate yeah so this is how your mechanism is ready take one spoon if you don't have spoon use any spherical uh, surface uh, material this spoon is going to be used as a launcher so now make two drills uh, on the launch plate and use zip tie to tighten this pencil put zip tie outside of the plate also now we are going to 
assemble another plate of that length so that yeah so we are also, we are cutting the extra edges extra length of the pencils we don't need and we have also put zip ties yeah we are going to put zip ties so that when we are going to use rubber band for using our catapult those uh, rubber bands will not you know, fall off those pencils so zip ties will uh, make sure that the rubber band will not fall off from those uh, double pins or pencils cut those extra length of the zip ties uh, using the cutter now we are going to use the wood polish uh, for coloring you can use any other paint make sure that you use brush uh, do not use cloth or do not just paint the wood surfaces using hand or cloth it is easy and safer using the uh, brush so apply the wood polish all across the surfaces uh, it is optional basically to paint but if you have paint or wood polish it is basically easy and your catapult will look better after coloring so our catapult is ready let's launch the ball the ball is projected and it is thrown at a farther distance so we try to make different attempts and you know made our catapult work we can use a rubber band or hair band if you have any questions i am available on the channel to answer your questions post them on the channel you are also going to you know refer to this uh, video on the channel later as well and you can record your questions and post them to me on the channel we will on the ask uh, your atl in charge to post their questions so thank you very much for watching this uh, video you learned the mechanics the mechanism behind the catapult you learned how their modern day catapults are worked in their uh, aircraft you catapult using carpentry uh, how to use hacksaw how to use the bench wise how to use the sandpaper carefully how to use the files and why it is important to use the bench wise yeah so we have done with the session so any concluding comments by ismail sir or bagesh ma'am yeah, nothing else sir Okay, thank you.